Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday, June 21st, 2023. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Those of you, some of you may have uh, kids graduating from high school, graduating from college. It is, or college was last month. Um, it is that time of year. It's just my son's going into his junior year and we've got graduation parties to go to, which is, which is fun. Um, and I'll be in that boat in a couple of years myself with him graduating. So anyway, not to digress, I want to welcome everybody, everybody to today's webinar. We're going to focus on wind chill um, and how it manages a bill of materials, as well as in that process, being able to manage multiple CAD systems. Because wind chill, as you may know or may not know, is CAD agnostic. It will manage any CAD system, any CAD file, um, and which makes it the premier PLM system on the market today. And uh, without any further ado, I'm going to have everything passed over to Shane Rigger. Shane is a solutions consultant and applications engineer with PTC's Virtual Center of Excellence. And he's going to lead the presentation and the demonstration today, which should be somewhere. What do you think, Shane, time-wise? Uh, like 10, 13 minutes, something, something around that. All right, so we got a short one today for about somewhere about maybe 15 to 20 with a question and answering session. So if you have any questions, put them into the uh, Q&A box and we'll answer them as we go along, or at least we'll definitely answer them at the end. Shane, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Perfect. So like he was mentioning, we're going to be going over Winchell's Bill of Materials Management. So not just your Bill of Materials Management, but also how those multiple CAD systems, those types of files would work within Winchill. And with bond management, it's all around being able to capture, configure, and manage all of that product data that's developed through the life cycle of, its pro of a product. And around the challenges pertaining to bill of materials and the, the management herein is products are becoming more and more complex with smaller parts that they need to do more things and also software components for increased usages. And when you have all those different components for a product, some components can be identical. Companies end up creating duplicates rather than a standard bomb and be able to reuse that information. Sometimes you need that same component on multiple different products and you have different components that need to be together and be easily viewed. You could also have electrical, mechanical, and like I mentioned, software users that need easier ways to collaborate in a cross-functional manner. And this is where bond management, again, is capturing, configuring, and managing all of that product data that's developed through that life cycle of a product. And it starts with a complete multi-dimensional bond that rolls up into that one single area, which I'll show throughout the demonstration as well. So it's, so it's more of a bill of information rather than just your bill of materials. When you have all of this information in the one place, you know, your users can know that they can come to one place to find all the information that they need so that they can make the decisions that they need to make uh, easier and faster. And within BOM, you might have Creo component, a SolidWorks component, and other types of CAD systems. And Windshield is known for that multi-CAD data management. And ultimately, the great part is, is that it rolls up into a single BOM that gets passed to an ERP system later on if you have one. And it provides full data traceability, so around Full, full revision control, lifecycle states, of course, the history of your information, and it can perform comparisons between the two so that you can see all of the changes in that product lifecycle. And like I mentioned, being able to export that information out so it can be used in those types of systems, whether it's ERP, M MRP, or just if you need to export those off as uh, CSV, Excel files, whatever the case would be. So now with the demonstration, what we're going to be going through is understanding within Windshow, how are products being managed? How, how is the multi-CAD multi uh, assemblies, parts being managed alongside uh, not just those parts, but also the disparate types of inf information you would generally have, whether it's documentation, PDFs, drawings, things of that nature. So first starting off within the browsing in Windchill, we'll go straight to our structure here, again, to understand the bill of materials. And now within the bill of materials, you're gonna notice two things. Firstly, you have your, your tree structure here on the left-hand side, and then also and with, with all of that information for the, for the versioning, the state that it's currently in, anything tied to your bill of materials, 
and also your visualization on the right hand side, which is going to be a lightweight representation of the actual model. So it's going to be accurate to your models. And, I'll sh and also within Creo View is another tool we have is you'd be able to analyze and dissect the different film materials, assemblies, parts that you'd be working with without ever having to worry about someone making, ac making an actual change to that part. So if we filter down between the bill of materials, you'll notice that we have a board here and there's actually sourcing information as well. So you're not just managing the bill of materials, the assemblies parts, but you can also include sourcing material, I mean, sourcing information. So if you have approved uh, rejected vendors that you need to have that information tied to that as well, you're bringing that in again to consolidate the views of your information. And then you also have cross highlighting. So it's not just showing that visualization, but allows you to actually take action in selecting on the tree on the left-hand side, having the visualization update on the right and vice versa. If you're working on the right-hand side of the visualization, being able to have that tree update as well to know exactly which part you're working with. And you can of course, multi-select on components within that visualization. So if you needed to just narrow down the search for your, your results even further to only show one part of the assembly or uh, part that you're working with, you can multi-select there and then have that be the main representation in your visualization. So it's a really powerful tool for being able to not only bring in your bill of materials, having all those assemblies parts, but making sure that you're not having to worry about which CAD files you're using, right? Because you're, you might be working with multi uh, CAD files. Now here on the left-hand side within the tree structure, again, all of that information is being tied to the, the bill of materials. So not just those assemblies and parts, but also additional information as well. If you begin to expand this out a little bit further, you can start to see how this is turning into more of a bill of, uh, bill of materials than what we've seen previously with a more collapsed view. But then you can also expand it out even further and turn it into that bill of information like I was talking about. So this is where you're not just including your assemblies and parts, but also additional information that would generally not be tied into a bill of materials. So already you can start to see that you have uh, additional information being added in for the anti-lock braking system we have. There's an assembly tied in, drawing, plant location, different generally disparate information that you wouldn't have accessible within your bill of materials. So that's the goal is to be able to manage your bill of materials, but also bring in that uh, additional information to tie in there. And also where this is beneficial is if you have your material safety data sheet, for example, that we're looking at, and you make a change to that sheet, what other impacts does that have? And because you are being, because you're able to manage it all within that one part, rather than having disparate files for that, you understand, okay, if I make a, a change to that material safety data sheet, this part is going to be affected. This drawing might be affected. Disparate, generally disparate information would be affected in that way. So it's a really uh, powerful tool for being able to manage all of that and have visualization and understanding into what that would look like. Now, with all of the data within Windchill, like I was mentioning, there's a cool a tool called Creo View. So let's say, for example, you're working with your bill of materials and you wanted to view or do markups on a couple different components here. Let's say a drawing, your instruction manual, uh, even a PCB board. You can bring all those into Creo View to have them all viewed in one location. So one, act one piece of software without having to have four different licenses to be able to do something that you would generally have to have four licenses for. So once we selected on all those components, we're simply bringing in our object list, selecting, selecting on those, and then we can launch Creo View directly from here. In Creo View, uh, you can notice already that we have that same visualization like we saw previously. And that's because Windchill is utilizing this technology. So not just viewing your assemblies, but also being able to bring in our uh, PCB boards, so the, the drawings that you're working with, PDF documentation. So you can think of Creo View as that all-in-one viewer for all of that information. And then, like I mentioned, if you needed to do any markups on whatever objects it would be, you can then tie that back into Windchill so that you're, again, keeping all of that information in a consolidated view rather than possibly having it in disparate systems to, to have that same sort of functionality. And it's, it's a much more powerful tool than just doing markups. There's even color-coded searching. So if you needed to 
uh, work within your models and understand life cycle states, for example, to see the difference between what's in work and what's already released on a product that you're working on. Here, you can bring in that color-coded searching and have that actually color code onto the model. So again, a really powerful tool if somebody, let's say, didn't have access to a CAD environment that they that the engineers would be working in even, those non-CAD users could go in and use that color code searching without having another uh, expensive license for whatever CAD platform you're using. Okay, now coming back in and working with our bill of materials. So what, whenever you're working with there, you're, you're, you already see the existing information, but what if you wanted to add additional parts or, or uh, information to an already existing bill of materials? Pretty straightforward. Uh, here on the left-hand side, we have that expanded version of our tree. And on the right-hand side, it's, it's just a collapsed version, what you're seeing on the left to the right. Now, whenever you're selecting on those, you can see already under the uses, we have our version history tied to those parts. And if you open up those parts as well, you would be able to see who created the part, when it was created, when changes were made last on it. And of course, that version, like I mentioned on it, and also being able to create or add new parts. So if you wanted to search for something already existing, such as a label, you're simply searching for that, adding that in, and two things are going to happen. One, it, the, the parts, of course, brought in with all of that version and history tied to it as well. And then also that part got checked out. So on the left-hand side under your tree, you can notice under break disk, there's a little yellow square with a blue triangle in there. That means that that's part, that part got automatically checked out. And what that's doing for you is eliminating the, the need for understanding if you're working on the most up-to-date version, making sure that there's no overriding work. So if somebody goes in and make, makes a change in that bill of materials, it automatically checks it out to that user. And then once they're done, they're checking that back in and commenting what changes were made to that version change. So here, like I mentioned, checking this part back in once you've gone in, made any changes, even if it's a documentation change, and you're just adding that in, you're leaving that comment in. And then if you had any review or approval process as well for any users adding in new information, let's say I hit okay on this, it could go through a workflow to make sure that information isn't just being added in depending on what they're working on as well. And then an also valuable tool is exporting information. So if you needed to export any bill of materials information uh, that you would need, whether it's CSV, Excel file, you can quickly do so because again, you're managing all of that from one system rather than working between the generally disparate systems. And here you can see how easy that is working with the bill of materials, exporting your bill of materials off, and then not having, again, not to do that manually like you would generally have. And then because you're going, whenever you're working with your bill of materials within the windshield, it's tracking all of your changes. So as you go from version one to two to three, it's tracking all of that, making sure that it's maintaining all of that information. And then you can also run comparisons as well. So a good example is, let's say today on June 21st, you wanted to understand what design changes you've had over the next six months. What you could do is create a baseline today and then create a baseline six months down the line and then compare those two baselines off. And what that's doing is allowing you to understand what changes have happened over that six months and also visually what's happened between the model. So it's giving you not only those attribute differences, but also the visualization differences as well. So here you can even see within that visualization, you would have that automatically be shown under that visualization tab at the bottom. And then here at the top within the between the two trees, you can see in the center, you have your attribute differences and the different uh, here, there's no equivalent object to the previous model. So showing you those quick differences in the center and then also in the trees, they're highlighted blue to also explain to you that there's differences in that part. Then before we wrap up, I want to go over how this can really bring benefit to in, in managing the bomb within one system. So firstly, users are able to have that information in one location and they know when they're working on the correct version, They and they don't have to worry about overriding work, knowing that they're on the most up-to-date version that's being worked on. Again, now users would have that one single source to get their information instead of going between disparate systems to have that. 
And lastly, uh, because Winchell is that one location where all the information is going to have, uh, that version control, collaboration, and easy searching for the information, which really allows users to work on value-added work. And I know I went over a good bit of information there. I don't know if there was any questions in chat, but that's all I had to go over for the demo today. Jane, this is good stuff. And especially since it's so direct and concise um, in a short period of time, it's you know a good asset for people to refer to in the future. And you know whether they need to remind themselves of what Windchill can do or if they need to understand a little bit more about what Windchill can do. So Shane, thank you very much. I appreciate um, Appreciate your detail and doing a great job as always, my friend. Thank you. Excellent. So that's going to conclude our webinar for today. Um, if you do think of any questions or if you want to see a uh, webinar, or I'm sorry, if you want to see more of a detailed demonstration on Windchill or any, any aspects of Windchill or any aspects of Creo, feel free to send me an email. All you have to do is respond to the email that was sent to you. Um, in relation to the invitation for this for this webinar, or you can email us at info, I-N-F-O at 3HTI.com. So thank you everybody for being on. I will have the recording up uh, posted on YouTube and that invitation is sent out uh, either later today, but by the latest, the end of the day tomorrow. Thanks everybody, have a great day.